before we start with electricity, we need to understand a very simple topic called electric charge. So you must have heard about atoms and what atoms are made up of. Yeah. Can you uh, tell me a little, little bit about that? Um, well, there's protons, neutrons, and electrons. Wonderful. So and uh, protons yeah. and neutrons are inside the nucleus while the electrons um, like orbit the nucleus basically. So I've drawn a nucleus here, which consists of, you know, this bundle of protons and neutrons. P means proton and N means neutron. So this whole bundle of things is called a nucleus. And as you said, electron revolve around the nucleus like this. This is what we have studied so far in books, right? Yeah. Now, uh, there is a fundamental property called electric charge that is associated with protons and neutrons. Wait, neutrons? Is it electrons? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Oh. So protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, uh, Neutrons practically have a zero charge. So we do not really talk about neutrons that much. Protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. Yeah. So this property is called electric charge. This property gives rise to the forces of attraction or repulsion. Right. Yeah. So, uh, like we like we do it for magnets, like poles, uh, you know, repel each other, and unlike poles, attract each other. Have you heard this before? Yeah. Right. So similarly, like charges, like positive and positive, and negative and negative, they repel each other. And unlike charges, positive and negative, they attract each other. So it is this property that gives rise to this force of repulsion or attraction. So we have been able to understand from this discussion what electric charge is. Mm. Would you like to write this down somewhere? Oh, yeah. Can you make out from this handwriting? It's really bad though. Uh, yeah, I can. Okay, done. Right. So we're going to the next thing now. So I'm turning to the next page. So uh, electric charge is a scalar quantity. You, uh, you have this idea of any quantity being scalar or vector, right? Yeah, that's chapter one. Right. So electric charge is a scalar quantity. That means electric charge can be add, added by following the rules of algebra. You need not bother about the directions. But um, electricity has direction. No, we're not really talking about electricity. We're talking about electric charge. Oh, okay. And the unit of electric charge Coulomb? is Coulomb, C-O-U-L-O-M-B, and the symbol is capital C. We cannot write small c. 
So going by this idea, scientists have been able to calculate the charge on one electron. Charge on one electron is negative 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Similarly, charge on one proton is the just the opposite of this plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. And charge on neutron is zero coulomb, so we need not talk about it. Mm. So you can memorize these values, but I guess they are usually provided in all the exams. Oh, okay. Right. So if I tell you, if I have two electrons, how much charge do I have? Can you figure it out? Uh, so I just add them together times two. Right. If I tell you I have 12 electrons, are you going to keep adding? Uh, yeah. What is repeated addition called? I do one and I use the calculator. Yes. So 12 into 1.6, that is called multiplication. Repeated addition. So 12 into 1.6 is the charge on 12 electrons. Similarly, we can be asked to calculate the charge on any number of electrons. So we have a simple formula for that. Charge is usually represented by a symbol Q, capital Q or small Q, is equal to number of electrons that you are being asked about. And E, E is the charge on one electron, which is this. So using this idea, you'll never be confused. For however many electrons, however number of electrons you are asked about, you can calculate anything using this. So this is the total charge. I thought that the formula for charge is Q equals IT. That is also a formula that relates charge with electric current. This is another formula that helps you calculate the number of electrons or the charge on a given set of electrons very easy. Oh. Okay. So we are going to use this formula and try some more numericals now. So I'm turning to the next page. So, calculate the number of electrons required to make up a charge of one coulomb. Do you understand the question? How many electrons would we need so that we have a charge of one coulomb? So you are going to use the formula Q is equal to any and find it. My six point two five is ten to the power of eighteen. Absolutely correct. That's right. You put the formula as Q is into any charge is one coulomb. N is something that you have to find, and E is one point. That's how you did? Yeah. Fantastic. Have you used this formula before? No. So it's a good, good attempt. So we've understood what charge is. Now let's move on to electric current. So electric charge discussion is over now. I'm moving to the next page now starting with electric current.
so you must have had geography classes before in any of the grades and oh. never never ever in your junior classes too never so this is going to be tricky if if air flows from one place to another what do we call that flow flow uh, technically in the language of geography we call it air current oh something that flows can be associated with the word current right mm. and if we have water flowing in a similar way what do we call it you can guess water we that's called water current oh these are geography terms physics has nothing to do with it but i i'm just trying to recall this because uh, electric current is similar to what we have here now mm. if electric charge flows from one place to another let's say an electron electron is moving from one place to another electric charge is flowing from one place to another that is called electric current you understand if water is flowing that is called water current if air is flowing that is called air current if electric charge is flowing that is called electric current mm -hmm. right so electric current is the flow of charge right yes that's what is there in the notes so now we need to understand how can we make electric charges flow because you know if anything is flowing there must be something which is helping it flow something cannot flow on its own for example if there is water water is flowing under the influence of gravity if air is flowing air is flowing because of some forces temperature differences nothing can flow on its own do you agree to that nothing can flow on its own there has to be some cause behind it now electric charge is fundamentally associated with electrons and proton we just studied in the previous discussion electric yeah. charge is found in atoms is it is associated with electrons and protons so it is very difficult for us to make electric charges flow like anything else because electric charge is in the atoms and atoms are really tiny we cannot see them with our eyes mm. but we are sure that if i take a piece of a conductor let's say a copper you understand what is the difference between a conductor and an insulator yeah <clears throat> can you explain that a bit in conductor there is um delocalized electrons delocalized electrons what what are those electrons what do they do oh they can carry charge they can carry charge and what makes them delocalized uh hmm like they're free to move basically but there are too many electrons inside the atom why some of them are free to move and why some of them are not Oh, I know. Yeah. So the electrons uh, that are really close to the nucleus, they cannot move outside because nucleus has protons, right? We studied that, and protons have a positive charge. So I can say that the nucleus overall has a positive charge. So if any electrons is really close to the nucleus, there will.